In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Ave Maria, Grazia Plana, Dominus Tecum, Benedicti tu, Mulieribus et Benedictus Fritus Ventris tu, Jesus, Santa Maria, Mater Dei, Ora per nobis peccatoribus nuca, and Ora mortis nostrae, Amen. In Good morning, Filii, fellow Spiritus patriots Sancti, and fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, so the rest of you, Probably not for you. However, if you stay tuned, you might learn something and receive some graces. Um, and if you're not a Christian or a patriot, then you surely need that. So, day number two of my five days of reparations. Um, it's going well. I'm doing a fast, if you don't know, if you didn't tune in. Um, and I'm also doing some other stuff, making some other sacrifices. Can't give away all my secrets, but... Um, sleeping on the floor is a big one. That's my least favorite. Um, not a fan. It's cold on the floor. Um, so didn't sleep well last night. Got some bags under my eyes, but it's all good. Um, and why do we do reparations? We do reparations because sacrifice purchases grace and mercy. Sacrifice and prayers, penance and prayers, um, reparations and prayers. And so I'm taking this time to focus on all of the messages, the private revelations, not all of them, but five of them from heaven, um, five times that heaven has told us this. It's a common theme. Um, five times that heaven has warned us to change our ways um, and given us the solution, which is prayer and sacrifice. Um so, yep, the fasting's going well. I think the longest one I've ever done is a three-day fast, three days of not eating. So this will be my longest one, five days. Um, so it's key if you attempt one of these things um, to drink fluids. So shout out to my little brother. Little brother sometimes come in handy. He hooked me up this morning at the store with um, cucumber mint water. So obviously I'm not going to eat the cucumber or the mint, but it gives it the water a delicious flavor. Um, so it hooks me up with some of these. I'll have to make some of my own. I was planning on making cucumber and basil, but there's like a national basil shortage. Like I don't understand what's happening. Um, fresh basil is, is my issue, um, but I did manage to find a pack, so we're good. So yeah, we're on the cucumber water diet uh, for the week, and you know what? People want to talk about the health benefits of fasting. That's great. Not all that concerned with them. Not my intention. My intention is to apologize to our Lord for offending him in this terribly sinful society, including my own sins. I have. I don't want to sound like I'm exempt, like I'm doing it for everyone else. Like I have millions of sins that I need to make reparations from, for. Um, and so people say, like, when you go to, con there's some confusion. When you go to confession, well, doesn't that wipe the slate clean? And the answer is yes, it does. However, you still have, temp you know, you still have to satisfy the debt that you owe, which is why you do penance, which is why the priest tells you to go say a rosary or five Hail Marys. Um, in my case, I'm an overachiever, and I've done terribly sinful things in my life, so I go above and beyond um, and also for the people in my life that are not followers that are have strayed from the faith um, and for my kids future sins <laughs> so I'm trying to cover everyone here but um, you know that's that's what we're called to do and I see a lot of people I'm going to ramble a bit before we get to our next um, thing but I, I find a lot of enlightenment when I fast. Um, the Lord will put things on my heart that I otherwise would not. Maybe he wouldn't. Um, so this morning I woke up with this notion of the underground church. Um, so the underground church was a thing back in the day when, you know, the Roman Empire was persecuting Christians and they would have to go in the catacombs and do mass on the catacombs or in people's houses and they would have their own network and they would have fish symbols everywhere. Kind of like the Underground Railroad, right? So I think we need to be revisit that. So I'm going to do a video on the Underground Church and compare it to the Underground Railroad and see what tactics they used back then. Um, but then I also got to thinking like, what an environment for Satan to hunt us down right now. Um, so we are, as, as as Catholics especially, no offense Protestants or, or whatever, but 
Catholics in a state of grace that can receive the Eucharist are high valued targets to the demonic. Absolutely, 100%. And if you want to test this theory out, go try to bring somebody back into the church that would be able to receive the Eucharist. I have gotten physically attacked over the last couple months. I'll just leave it at that in my sleep, you know, in at night. Um, and it's always like the same area because whatever. The, the demon wants to silence you, that's for sure. Um, so it's effective. Um, we are effective. Demons hate us. Satan, we are the number enemy number one. So when Christ was on earth, Christ was enemy number one, right? In, in the Virgin Mary, enemy number one or two. When Christ was, was not on earth, the Virgin Mary. Um, the Bible tells us, scripture tells us that the dragon will wage a war on Mary's children, okay? We are enemy number one. So where am I going with this? I'm going with, we need to be a little more prudent. Um, so here we are in 2021, still live streaming a bunch of masses, which whatever, I mean, I guess it could be a good thing. Um, but then I just found out yesterday that Bezos owns the internet. Like all the internet goes through Amazon servers. He just silenced Parler, right? Um, so what do you think is going to happen when they start cracking down? They're going to go look at these live stream masses. They're going to see who's there. They're going to see what the priest is saying. Um, so my advice, women, now might be a great time to bring back the veil. Just saying. It's kind of hard to see who's who when you're all wearing veils. Um, men, I don't know. I got no advice for you. Toughen up. <laughs> um, don't sit in view of the live stream camera. Go and watch your live streams and pick areas in the church that you're not going to be recorded. I do this by default, honestly, um, and for no other reason. You know, I heard the Lord saying to me when I entered Mass today, this is when it dawned on me, he's like, you know, he was kind of like put on my heart, like, you know, pay attention and look at where you sit. Um, why did I guide you to sit there? I always sit in the same spot. I always sit near the Blessed Virgin. Um, we have a statue of the Blessed Virgin, and I always sit on her side. But that's just because of my devotion to the Holy Mother. Um, so it just, again, goes to show that devotion to the Holy Mother, she's never going to lead you astray. Um, but that particular area, is, my point is, is outside of the live stream feed. So people don't even know I'm there, right? Not that I'm trying to hide, um, but if you want tips on how to hide, I'm your girl. That's what I do for a living. I hide, literally hide from people for a living. So I know how to be sneaky. I know how to hide. I know how to do surveillance, and I know how to do counter surveillance. Um, so that's the way my brain works, um, and we all have different gifts in the body of Christ, right? So I'm just here to tell you that the time has come, come that we need to be a little more prudent because Satan, as we have seen from the slaughter of the innocents, right? We just celebrated the feast day of the slaughter of the innocents, um, will take out innocent people who aren't even Christian to get to you. He will kill a whole, a whole town. He'll drop a bomb on a whole town if it means that he takes out one true follower of Christ. That's the truth. Take that to the bank. Uh, so that's where we're at. We need to realize what we are. Obviously, stay humble. But we need to realize what Christ is in us. Because that's what happens when you receive the Eucharist. You um, go out into the world now with the light of Christ. And that does, does miracles and wonders that we don't even know about. So we need to realize that. And that's why he tells us to be gentle. Obviously, we're not going to go storm the storm buildings and all this but we also need to be prudent stop being complacent don't be complacent keep watch know your enemy no they don't they hate you get it through your head it is what it is like don't feel bad about it just accept what it is in 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 understand and start retraining yourself that's what i have to say about that next there's a lot of people that seem to have lost faith because donald trump didn't win the election and how could god turn us over to our enemies well Quite frankly, you know, with all the novenas and all the rosaries that were prayed, listen, if there is one thing I know about my Lord, it is this. He does not answer prayers in the way you want him to answer prayers, okay? What may look like a complete destruction and a complete betrayal and that he has left us and abandoned us is probably just him letting evil collapse on itself, 
cleaning house and then rebuilding. Okay, he he that's how he works. I can tell you from personal experience of months of fasting and praying and my answer was that my life literally ended overnight as I knew it. I was mad at the time. I didn't understand how could you do this to me, Lord? I all those prayers and all those fastings and you didn't save my marriage. Why? Um Sorry, and I have to add in here, um, the Lord does not like divorce or anything, but my marriage was not valid in the eyes of God, which I didn't understand at the time of the prayers and the fasting because I did, I was an ignorant, strayed Catholic um, taking advice from Protestants. So, uh, yeah, so that's just a side note. How could you do this to me? And then, you know, combined with the fact that there was issues, religious issues within that. But he was saving me from something. You know, I, if I didn't come out of that, my kids probably wouldn't have, you know, wouldn't be making their first communion. You know what I mean? So there's things, he works things for his purpose. His ways are higher than ours. So just chill out and keep the faith. Stop feeling bad for yourselves. And stop losing the faith. Like, just because it looks bad right now doesn't mean anything. It means nothing. So he will make it so that he has the glory. He will defeat evil. And it's not going to be, no man is going to be able to take credit for it. Okay. And that's why I know Donald Trump isn't going to save us because it's past that. Um, Donald Trump, I want to talk about Donald Trump. Maybe we should have taken the last four years to overturn abortion, right? He had three su Supreme Court picks, not one of them would overturn abortion. So we had our little shot. And if you don't think that the, the sacrifice of children is number one on God's agenda, you're absolutely wrong. You're wrong and you need to go repent and pray. With that being said, coffee, water, it's a good day to fast. Um, I want to go over an apparition, a church approved Marian apparition that I have never heard of before. And I don't think most people have heard of it before. And it was in the 1600s. So yesterday we covered the 1500s. And we covered um, Our Lady of the Good Events. Our Lady of the Good Success. Our Lady of um, Bueno Suceso. And today we are going to be covering an apparition in Le Laos, France. And I think it's under the title, I've only seen this one place, so you, I don't know, you'll have to check me on this, but Our Lady of Happy Meetings is what they're calling her on here. And this site that I'm on is Miracle Hunter, which I think is a great site because they um, give up, they have like all these Marian apparitions compiled together. But she's more commonly referred to Our Lady of, I guess it's pronounced uh, la, la, Laos, 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 we'll go with Laos, L-A-U-S, excuse me, I am not French, I'm Italian, which I guess is the closest, I, I'm Italian, Irish, and Polish, so I guess the cl closest would be the Italian, which I also don't speak well, but anyway, I digress, um, let's read this, here, all right, so the seer is, um, Bene, uh, Benonite, or sorry, Benoit or Benedicta, they have in parentheses, Rencurel. Um, she was born in Saint Etienne de Vancon in the southern French Alps. Um, in, in this, she was born in 1647, 1654. Her father dies. The family suffers financial difficulties with creditors. Um, 1659, her family was in even worse straits, so she took employment tending sheep for two masters at the same time. And I believe she's an orphan at this point. She doesn't have a mother. And I want to say this about Mary, which I also know from personal experience. If you don't have a mother <laughs> or a good mother or a substitute for your mother, anything like that, um, Mary has a special, uh, um, Mary will make herself known to you, I think. It's just from my personal experience, even when you don't deserve it. She, has a, she takes special pity and compassion on those that are motherless. Um, that's why we, I think we see some of, you know, like Mother Angelica was an orphan, you know, so we see it's kind of a reoccurring theme. People that have a great devotion to Mary, um, I think it's more through a grace given by Mary than anything that we did personally.
personal opinion. All right. All right. So it first started out um, May of 1664. She sees a vision of St. Maurice. Um, she was 17, praying the rosary, which was her favorite devotion, watching her flock when she suddenly saw an old and venerable man clothed in the vestments of a bishop of the early church. And he came up to her. Sorry. Okay. I'm making sure this is recording. Um, he came up to her. And he said, my daughter, what are you doing here? And she said, I'm watching my sheep, praying to God and looking for water to drink. He said, I'll get some for you. And he, she said, you're so beautiful. Are you an angel or Jesus? And he said, I am Maurice, to whom the nearby chapel, which was then in ruins, is dedicated. My daughter, do not come back to this place. It is part of a different territory, and the guards would take your flock if they found it here. Go to the valley above St. Uh, Et, Etienne, Etienne, this is where you will see the mother of God. And she says, but sir, she is in heaven. How can I see her there? And then St. Maurice says, yes, she is in heaven and on earth too when she wants. So then we begin with the apparitions of Our Lady of Laos. Very early the next morning, she hastily led her flock to the indicated spot, the um, valley of the kilns so-called because the hill above this valley contained gypsum which the village inhabitants extracted and fired to make plaster for their buildings benonite benoni benoit benoit i don't know her name can we just call her b or the seer the seer had just arrived in front of a little grotto that was on the site when she saw a lady of incomparable beauty holding a no less beautiful child by the hand she was ravished by the sight Despite St. Maurice's prediction, however, the naive shepherd girl could not imagine that she was in the presence of the mother of God. Lovely lady, what are you doing here? Did you come to buy some plaster? Would you be so kind as to give us this child? He would delight us all. Would you like to eat with me? I've got some good bread. We can dip it in the spring. The lady smiled again and continued letting her enjoy her presence, going in and coming out of the cavity in the rock, approaching her and moving away from her. Then when evening came, she took the child in her arms, entered the grotto, and disappeared. The following day, and for the next four months, the seer um, contemplated on that sight the joy of the angels and the ornament of heaven. The shepherd girl's face was transfigured right from the start. She shared her happiness with everyone in cheerful simplicity. And the grotto is super symbolic. We see the grotto again reoccurring in Lourdes. Um, why does Our Lady like caves? That's basically what a grotto is, because my personal opinion, that's where Jesus was born, in a cave, in a manger. Then, after two months of silence, she made her pupil, made her her pupil and began to speak in order to teach, test, and encourage her, putting herself on the level of the mountain girl's uneducated minds. The Queen of Heaven condescended to familiarities that would surprise us if we did not know that Mary's goodness is boundless. Um, we also see this in La Salette. She spoke a, a different dialect to the children. One day, our tender mother invited the seer to rest by her side, and the weary child went peacefully to sleep on the hem of the virgin's mantle. Another time, doing as mothers do to teach prayers to their children, she had her repeat word by word the litany of Laredo, which go back and watch my video on that, on um, the house of Laredo, the holy house. Then enjoined her to teach it to the girls of St. Etienne and go to church with them every evening to sing it there. With the sweetness and patience of a mother, she formed her gradually in view of her future mission. And that is what Mary does. She first comes to us with love, compassion, and then she forms us into sh soldiers. I can tell you that from personal experience. Again, the pious young girl was still... Um, Uncouth, quite stubborn, and readily impatient. Before the Virgin Mary personally revealed her name, she initiated the seer in the role she was about to play all her life to work at the conversion of sinners. Ready? This is the message, guys. Her, the role that she was to play was to work at the conversion of sinners through prayer, sacrifice, and a special vocation, exhortation. For God had granted her the... Um, charism of reading in hearts i think padre pio also had that we see other saints that had that 
Consequently, she was often given the heavy task of correcting souls and disclosing their sad condition to them. When needed, she would remind them of their forgotten or hidden sins and urge them to purify themselves of them. A striking conversation among many others occurred to give credit not only to the apparition, but to the seer's clairvoyance as well. The seer's employer, employer, Mrs. Rowland, a woman who had no interest whatsoever in religion, wanted to see for herself what was going on at the site of the apparitions. One day before dawn, she went in secret to the grotto, entered before the seer, and hid behind a rock. The seer arrived, and a few moments later she saw the beautiful lady. The Virgin Mary said, Your mistress is over there hiding behind the rock. Tell her not to curse with the name of Jesus, because if she keeps it up, there will be no paradise for her. Her conscience is in a very bad state. She should do penance. The employer, who had heard everything, tearfully promised to amend, and she kept her word. News of the apparitions began to spread. People were talking about them all over. Many believed in them, but several others were incredulous and treated the shepherd girl as a false mystic among the many people who supported the seer were the little girls of saint stephen's who like her loved mary with all their heart the virgin um, says tell the girls of saint stephen's to sing the litany of the blessed virgin in the church every evening with the permission of the prior and you will and you will see that they do it indeed once they had learned their lessons the litany was chanted every evening with great devotion it might be interesting to point out here that Laos is in the Diocese of Embrun. Since 1638, the year of the consecration of France to Mary by King Louis VIII, the Litany of Loretto had been chanted regularly in the Cathedral of Embrun. As reports of the apparitions took on greater expansion, Francus Germud, the magistrate of the Van Avincon Valley, a good Catholic and a man of integrity, decided to conduct an investigation. After serious examination, he concluded that the seer was not deceiving anyone, nor was she an impostor or mentally ill. He also observed that she had not asked her lady to reveal her identity, so to speak. At the magistrate's request, although personally it cost her a great deal, the seer was obliged to ask. Benedictus said, My good lady, I and all the people in this place are hard put to know who you are. Might you not be the mother of our good god also please be so kind as to tell me and we will build a chapel here to honor you the virgin mary said there is no need to build anything there because she had chosen a more pleasant spot i am mary the mother of jesus you will not see me here anymore nor for some time then in september 29th which is um the feast of the archangels shout out to saint michael 1664 Benedicta says, O oh, good mother, why did you deprive me of the joy of seeing you for so long? And the Virgin Mary says, From now on, you will see me only in the chapel that is in Laos. And Mary showed her the path that went up and over the hill towards Laos, a village the young girl had heard about but never visited because um, she lived in a neighboring village. So some f pious people in 1640 built a little chapel dedicated to Notre Dame de Bon. Um, Rencontre or Our Lady of Good Encounter deep in the solitude of Laos. Um, they had done so for the purpose of gathering there to pray where high water would prevent them from going to the oh, when high water would prevent them from going to the parish church in St. Etienne. Exteriorly, the humble thatch roof structure looked like all the other small houses just over two meters square. It had a plaster altar whose only ornaments were two wooden candlesticks in a ciborium that is where the queen of heaven awaited the young shepherd girl as in a new stable of bethlehem since the seer had never heard of the chapel the next day she searched a long time for it in tears going here and there sometimes wandering away for a moment she stopped at the entrance of each poor dwelling trying to detect the sweet fragrance finally she detected it near a door left ajar entering she found our beautiful lady standing on a dust covered altar and the virgin says, My daughter, you have searched diligently for me, and you should not have wept. Even so, you please me by not being impatient. Um, so obviously she was trying to teach her patience. Um, the seer humbly accepted this remark and then noticed with sadness the pitiful condition of the altar. Um, Honorable lady, would you like me to spread my apron under your feet? It is very white. 
No, soon nothing will be lacking here, neither vestments nor altar, linens nor candles. I want a large church built on the spot, along with a building for a few resident priests. The church will be built in my honor of my dear son and myself. Here many sinners will be converted. I will appear to you often here. Um, then she, the seer starts questioning. There's no money for that. And the virgin says nothing will be lacking. Um, throughout the winter of 1664 through 65, in spite of the four kilometers that separated the village of St. Etienne from the chapel, the seer went up to it every day and she often saw the virgin. And again, we see the same message that we always see. The Virgin Mary, pray continuously for sinners. Oftentimes she would name those she wanted her to pray for. In this way, the Virgin was forming the seer for her mission, which was to help priests in the ministry of confession and the conversion of sinners. As of 1665, the Blessed Virgin asked her to stop tending flocks in order to devote herself to her mission. Um, Virgin Mary, I asked my son for Laos for the conversion of sinners, and he has granted it to me. September 14th, um, the Viker general of the diocese, who was most unsympathetic towards the apparitions, came to Laos in the company of several priests who were equally unsympathetic to the events, hoping to put an end to the sorcery, prove the seer guilty of a hoax, and shut down the chapel. When the poor shepherd girl heard that she arrived, she was so afraid she wanted to leave the virgin told her not to run away. You must remain. You must do justice to churchmen. They will question you one by one and try to catch you with your own words, but don't be afraid. Tell the vicar general that he can very well make God come down from heaven by the power he received when he became a priest, but he has no commands to give the mother of God. Oh, boy. All right, so invite those. She prayed for people with illnesses. Um, the Virgin also says this um, regarding the people with illnesses, and I think this speaks to the anointing of the sick as well. If they take oil from the lamp in the chapel and apply it to themselves, and if they have recourse to her intercession and have faith that they will be healed, that God has given her this place for the conversion of sinners. Um, and that's healing oil. We see blessed oil, healing oil. It's a common theme. Okay, there was a bunch of, you know, nonsense that went on, them trying to prove her wrong and persecuting her. All right, sorry about that. Um, and let's continue. Um, so, the oil. All right, then the Virgin Mary also says, Take heart, my daughter, have patience. Do your duty cheerfully. Bear no hatred towards the enemies of Laos. Do not be troubled and sick over it if people do not profit from your advice. And I think that's especially good advice for our current situation because it seems like people don't get it like you can talk to them till they're blue in the face and they still don't get it um do not be disturbed by temptations visible or invisible spirits or temporal affairs strive never to forsake the presence of god for whoever has any faith will dare not to offend him canon gilly galliard states that from 1664 to 1672 incredulity made only a few small waves but during the next 20 years, unspeakable contradictions arose, especially among the clergy, then infected with Jansenist venom. Father Lambert, vicar general of the Diocese of Ibram, had passed away. A few members of the Metropolitan Chapter, who were prejudiced against Laos, took advantage of the authority they exercised in the in interim to issue an in interdict against the Holy Girl. They posted their documents on the doors of the cathedral, and threatened with excommunication any priest who celebrated Mass in the Laos Chapel. They also posted a sign on the church door at Laos forbidding public devotions on that site. Virgin Mary says, Remove that paper and let Mass be said here as it was before. <laughs> oh boy. On March 18, 1700, the seer's guardian angel had told her the Laos devotion is the work of God which neither man nor the devil can destroy. It will continue until the end of the world, flourishing more and more and bearing great fruit everywhere. 
On Christmas Day of 1718, after asking forgiveness of those who were present for the bad examples she might have given during her lifetime, she requested and received holy um, viaticum. Suddenly her good mother reappeared before her eyes, leaving behind a fragrance, fragrance that pervaded the very poor chamber. She also had visions of Christ. Um, she saw our Lord crucified, bleeding and in an agony with the wounds in his hands, feet, and side, and red gashes from scourging covering his body. Um, she exclaimed, Oh my Jesus, if you remain like this another instant, I will die. The guardian angel told her, Do not be troubled, my sister. Although our divine master has appeared to you in this condition, he is not suffering anything. It is solely to show you what he suffered out of love for the human race. Um, Christ says that on Friday, July 7th, 1960, or sorry, 1673, my daughter, I'm showing myself to you in this condition so that you may participate in the sorrows of my passion. Every week from that day on, she suffered a mystical crucifixion between Thursday evening and Saturday morning. This weekly crucifixion lasted 15 years. It's the stigmata. With a two-year interruption from 1677 to 1679 when she served food to the workers who were building the priest's residence. In November 1679, the mystical crucifixion was renewed at the cross of Anvicon. Um, with that being said, she was also imprisoned, I believe, in her home for like 15 years. Um, and so this was really a suppressed apparition due to the corruption in the church. Um, in 2008, Bishop John Michael de Falco Leandri, the Bishop of Gap in the French Alps, celebrated a special mass to announce the Vatican's approval of the Marian apparitions in that diocese that occurred between 1664 and 1718. So that was, it didn't get Vatican approval until 2008. Um, although the shrine founded there has been drawing pilgrims since the late 17th century, Our Lady of Laos is relatively unknown outside of France. Um, the website for the shrine is only available in French and Italian, and the nearest airport is 60 mountain miles away. Um, the shrine may be obscure to those outside the region, but her message of reconciliation with its emphasis on repentance, the sacrament of penance, and the reparation for sins should be better known. Our Lady of Laos is known as the Refuge of Sinners. She appeared to the seer for more than half a century. She repeated a call for holiness and de devotion among the laity and faithfulness among the priests and religious. The Mother of God also promised miraculous healings for those anointed with holy oil, holy oil if they had faith in her intercession. Mary's calls for repentance, warnings against unfaithfulness and scandal, and requests for a shrine to be built in Laos are all common attributes of the Marian apparitions recognized by the church. Since they are private revelations, we're obviously not required to believe in them. Um, so, like all visionaries, this year knew suffering and misunderstanding. After all, she was a simple peasant. Um, instructing priests on how to welcome penitents with kindness and charity in the sacrament of penance to encourage them to confess their sins and repent. She was also she also urged young girls and older women to be modest, sometimes correcting their dress or behavior. And she also um, got warning about let's see, abortion came up. Um, Mary asked the seer to admonish women and girls about living lives of scandal, especially those who commit abortion. She also encouraged priests and religious to be faithful in their vows. Um, but we're going to get back to the abortion in a second, and we're going to see why in God and all his divine providence with his holy mother brought this again to light in the 20th century. Um, so this 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 apparition kind of was underground for a while and then we're going to see which pope reinvigorated reopened the case so to speak i think you're going to find it interesting okay and other interesting facts um in 1665 the apparition was approved only when a healing miracle convinced the skeptical um vicar general 
Because of political actions of the local clergy, Benedicta was kept under house arrest for 15 years, only being allowed to leave for Sunday Mass. An angel appeared to her during this time, explaining that there would be conflict for some time. Um, she died three days after Christmas in 1718. In 1872, she was declared a servant of God by Blessed Pope Pius IX and Pope St. Pope St. John Paul II reopens her beatification process in 1981. In 2009, Pope Benedict XVI proclaimed her as venerable. So this is all very recent within our lifetimes. Um, all right, I'm going to stop rambling and I'm going to wrap this up with a nice little bow for you. Um, why did this apparition go underground for so long and why was it reopened by Pope John St. Pope St. John Paul II. Well, I'm going to tell you why, and it has to do with human sacrifice and abortion. Um, and the cure for that is what? Repentance. So if you have been complicit in or participated in, or even if you haven't been, we've all been complicit at this point in, in abortion, okay? Um, by either if you had one, or if you were a guy who had a girlfriend that had one, or whatever, or if you have not spoken out against it or done enough, we've none of us have done enough to end it and to educate our youth about how bad it is. Um, we are all complicit in it in that way. And now we're really all about to be complicit in it with this vaccination program. So Pope St. John Paul II, Saint, is it St. Pope? I guess it's St. Pope John Paul II. I always say that wrong. We just had a year of um, that we were supposed to meditate on his encyclical um, Evangelium Vitae. And what it is, is to, it, it's, a, it's a letter, to the bishops, priests, and deacons, men and women, religiously faithful, and all people of goodwill, on the value and inviolability of human life. So a very pro-life, outspoken pope, which is, he's just teaching what the church has said, that's all. Um, but he, the fact that he was the one, he was in our times, he lived in our times, and he was the one to reopen that is very telling for our current situation that we're in, okay? This is what I mean. We have all the answers. We've been warned. Um, yesterday, we went over Our Lady of uh, Buen Bueno Suceso, which she was harping on the Freemasons and how they're going to take over society and the church. And now we're seeing with this other apparition, um, Our Lady of Laos, abortion is mentioned. Um, she tells the seer to admonish women who are scandalizing themselves with abortion and with um, the dress and all that. And I can imagine back then it definitely wasn't at the level that we're at now. I'm pretty sure. I don't even think abortion was legal back then. I don't know. Um, but the answer is to reconcile with the church. So you first have to ask for forgiveness. So first, in order for something to be a mortal sin, you first have to know it's wrong. So just understand that way it, we've created this environment now where people don't even really know it's wrong. Um, although you do have the moral law written on your heart. So it's really not an excuse. Um, but ask for forgiveness first, do the penance and then, um, we can go from there, but that's what she's saying. That's why she shows up, talks about abortion. She's Mary, you know, our lady, the refuge of sinners. And, and the whole message is reconciliation and penance prayer and sacrifice so those are always the solutions and the problems we see that she has talked about are all very very present in our modern day crisis so we need to listen to her we need to take heart um, we need to pay attention go back and read these private revelations and see what she's talking about um, and figure out what to do about them and the answer I can just tell you is always fasting and praying and reconciliation with the church. So that is all. We should all um, take the lead from um, the seer and offer ourselves up as sacrifices and try to make people see the light. And like Mary told her, if people do not want to see the light and do not heed your advice and don't listen to you, don't take it personal. Don't take it to heart. Keep the faith. Keep going because it's not about them. 
it's really just about you in the end. What did you do? What are you going to tell God when you are standing in front of him on judgment day? Not that you're going to tell him anything. He already knows everything. Um, but that's what it comes down to. So prayer and sacrifice. Reconcil- reconciliation. Our Lady of Laos, pray for us. Uh, Joan of Arc Media out. Have a good day.